Hello, everyone, and welcome to a holly jolly episode of Kodo Cinema. And today, I'm going to count down my top 10 favorite Christmas movies of all time. That is right, folks, since today is the December 2nd. And since this is the first week of December, I thought I'd do a Christmas count countdown list. That is right, my top 10 favorite Christmas movies. <laughs> Now, uh, just to be clear, I'm talking about Christmas movies that tackle the Christmas genre in general or Christmas movies that tackle multiple genres in live action or animation. I'm only doing theatrical Christmas movies that were released in movie theaters. So don't expect to hear, don't expect to hear any movies that were made for TV or TV specials on this list. So anyway, you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Because my list is about to begin. Number 10. Jingle All The Way. Kicking off this list is the guilty pleasure Christmas movie starring Arnold Schwarzenegger as a father named Howard who is a workaholic screwing up his family's Christmas by not keeping his promise to his son Jamie. Played by Jake Lloyd and his wife. So anyway, this movie follows Howard going on a wacky mission to buy his son Jamie a Turbo Man doll by traveling all over Minnesota to find it, while also being pursued by police, customers, Army of Santa Clauses, Phil Hartman, and Sinbad himself, named By uh, Byron. Uh, is that how I'm saying his name, or just uh, Sinbad in general? Yep. Okay. Okay, folks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, for those of you who have seen Jingle All The Way, a lot of you guys see this movie as, uh, as a guilty pleasure movie that is so bad, it's good. So, okay, yes, this movie is on the naughty list for being a critical disaster, but Jingle All The Way has gained a better reputation in pop culture as a Christmas movie that is so bad, it's good. Yep. And yes, yes, that the the performances of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sinbad are actually pretty good, but but funny at the same time. Even though yes, the writing story is kind of all over the place, but um, but at the same time, it is a very funny movie to watch, even on Christmas, because hey, Jingle All the Way takes place during the Christmas during Christmas time, so hey, that's actually pretty good. So anyway. Yep, it also has a lot of few one-liners that are actually pretty good. So, anyway, I'm going to put the cookie down and move on to my next entry. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> put the cookie down. Put the cookie down! Now! Okay, I'm moving on. Number 9, A Christmas Carol. The 2009 version, which is basically known as Disney's, Disney's A Christmas Carol. Disney and Christmas movies are never shy away going into a dark direction, and, a Christ and Disney's A Christmas Carol is no exception. There are so many versions of A Christmas Carol that are going on in film, and while A Muppet's Christmas Carol would have made this list, it's the 2009 motion capture 3D movie with Jim Carrey that takes the stocking for this. Directed by Robert Zemeckis with a musical score by Alan Silvestri, this film follows Ebenezer Scrooge, who is a grumpy old man who doesn't love Christmas, but but he is soon haunted by three spirits that takes him that takes him to his past, present, and future of Christmas. So, what is basically surprising about this movie is the use of motion. Mo, mo, I mean, excuse me, my mo, motion capture performances from both Jim Carrey and Gary Oldman, which both gave him gave a good performance as Ebenezer Scrooge and Bob Cratchit including multiple characters, as with most Robert Zemeckis movies. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, Jim Carrey and uh, Gary Oldman played multiple characters in Disney's A Christmas Carol, which is actually surprising, particularly in a motion capture movie. And yes, anima animated movies as well. Now, this may be my opinion, but A Christmas Carol is both a Christmas movie and, at times, a horror movie at I mean that's just that's just my opinion because of the fact of how the main character Ebenezer Scrooge 
has to deal with three spirits that takes him to his past, present, and future. Which, if you kind of think about it, is at times a bit frightening at times. But anyway, no matter what your past, present, or future will look like for Christmas, A Chris Disney's A Christmas Carol still stands as a great Christmas movie to watch. And say what you will about uh, Disney's version of A Christmas Carol, but I think Disney's A Christmas Carol is a is a visually stunning movie to watch. Whether you're in it for um, the visual, whether you're in it for the visuals, musical score, direction, performances, or just the movie in general, I think Disney's A Christmas Carol is a great movie to watch. Okay, moving on. Number eight, Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the live-action 2000 version. Speaking of Jim Carrey, Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas deals with a troubled past from the title character, and we actually can understand why. And uh, and uh, before I go into the live-action version of The Grinch, the original 1967 or 68, or let's just say uh, the original Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas animated special with Boris Karloff and Thurl Ravenscroft will forever remain a classic Christmas special to watch. And uh, and don't get me wrong, I love the original Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. It's it's literally an amazing special to watch, but but the 2000 live action version with Jim Carrey is actually a good one too, despite despite the flaws it has. Directed by Ron Howard, this movie follows along with the book while extending the story extending the story and adding in new rhymes. Which is actually pretty good because I think the the live action Grinch movie does follow along the book pretty well, mostly going into the final act, but uh, but actually throughout the movie it did tell an amazing good story because it did add in the Grinch's past of why he hates Christmas, and basically when he was a little when he was a little Grinch he was made fun of, and that is why he doesn't like Christmas, which is definitely saying something. And I think Jim Carrey's performance as the Grinch was very funny and also amazing at times. So anyway, but anyway, uh, say what you will about uh, the 2000 version of the Grinch, but I think it's a great Christmas movie to watch. And and the 2018 animated reboot movie with Benedict Cumberbatch also deserves a, a mention as well. Okay, moving forward. Number seven. Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. And Disney Disney takes the next stocking on this list for a horror movie and a Christmas movie. Hey, two different genres. That's actually pretty good. As I mentioned before in the opening of this podcast. Okay, so anyway, while Tim Burton didn't direct this movie, he was still involved in he was still involved with this movie as a producer alongside with uh, composer Danny Elfman, which he also did the vocal performance for Jack Skellington alongside with Chris Sarandon voicing Jack Skellington. Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, both both Danny Elfman and Chris Sarandon voiced Jack Skellington in The Nightmare Before Christmas. And and uh, this stop-motion animated movie follows Jack, who is tired of Halloween and decides to take over Christmas as Santa Claus. And... Yeah, I can understand why Jack doesn't uh, want to do Halloween anymore. But at the same time, I mean, he and I can understand he wants to try something new with it, which is basically understanding like Christmas. But it did fall into a disastrous moment because Jack Skellington is more for Halloween while, while Santa Claus is more for Christmas, which is basically kind of the point of this movie. And... But I mean, hey, hey, hey! Yeah, you gotta give you gotta give Jack Skellington props for trying something new, even though it ended in a disaster. Sometimes it's a good idea with a bad execution. But anyway, this stop motion animation is actually considered to be one of the greatest animated movies of all time, thanks in no small parts to uh, to the stop motion animation, the visual effects, uh, vocal performances. And the music music itself is actually pretty good. And today is still considered to be one of the greatest animated movies of all time. And yes, a lot of people are asking if Nightmare Before Christmas is a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie. However, I consider it to be both. Yep. Okay, moving on. 
Number six, Shazam. Okay, this is probably an odd choice because, uh, and yes, uh, Shazam is technically both a superhero movie and a Christmas movie at, at the same time. And uh, going off topic a little bit, some Christmas movies use the Christmas genre as a subplot. Movies like Die Hard, Iron Man 3, Gremlins, Batman Returns, and others have different uh, genres while having the Christmas genre as a subplot. And Shazam is no exception. Now, yes, Shazam, uh, 2019 Shazam, Shazam is basically a superhero movie, but it is never shy away to add in a subplot of, um, of a genre like, like Christmas. So anyway, uh, it's considered to be uh, one of DC's greatest movies of 2019, which Shazam is what I'm talking about. Shazam is a great superhero movie and a Christmas movie to watch with the, with the whole family. Thanks in no small parts to Zachary Levi, Levi's performance as the title character, as well as the story, direction by by I, David F. F. Sandberg and Benjamin Walfish's. I oh boy, I hope I'm saying his name correctly. Benjamin Walfish's perform no not performance a musical score, as well as the humor, writing, and references to the 1980s, while giving in to the spirit of the holidays with some jolly moments. Yes, yes. Uh, even in the opening of Shazam, there were some Christmas songs. <laughs> there were Christmas songs in the opening, especially in Philadelphia, where uh, Billy Batson's character is trying to find his family while also uh, trying to spend some uh, spend the holidays as well, <laughs> including some funny Santa Claus moments whenever Shazam and and Doctor Savannah are attacking the city. Yes, yes. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, now that I mention, now that I, now that I mentioned about Shazam as being a Christmas movie, it's like saying that Die Hard's a Christmas movie, even though Die Hard is a action movie. But be it as it may, but sometimes uh, some movies that have uh, two different genres can be up for consideration, and Shazam is a great example for it. All right, now I am going to move on to my next entry. Okay, one, two, three, Shazam! All right, number five, The Polar Express. Robert Zemeckis and Alan Silvestri strikes back with their first ever motion capture animated movie starring Tom Hanks, who played seven different characters. And yes, seven, Tom Hanks plays seven different characters in The Polar Express, with one of them being the conductor, uh, one of the, I think, uh, I think one of the train passengers who uh, lives on the train, Santa Claus, the father, and I am pretty sure I'm missing a few. And, uh, however, the Polar Express was what came out before Jim Carrey and Gary Oldman took on multiple roles for 2009's A Christmas Carol. Anyway, uh, the Polar Express is based on the book by Chris Van Alsberg, who also wrote Jumanji. This story follows a boy who takes a magical ride on a train called the Polar Express, while also believing in the spirit of Christmas and Santa Claus. This film takes the audience on a magical adventure on the railway to the North Pole, thanks to its motion capture performances and overall visual spectacle. Now, uh, going off topic a little bit, uh, I really, really enjoyed the Polar Express. It is literally a great Christmas movie to watch. Even with the, the motion capture... And CGI and visual spectacle of this movie, it's literally bringing, even with all the visuals and computer technology that brought this movie to life, it's literally amazing. It, I couldn't believe my eyes. Like, literally, first time seeing that, I thought it looked like live action at first, but at the same time, it's basically motion capture. And uh, Robert Zemeckis uh, never shies away from bringing in some good visuals. He brought in a very good visual spectacle to the Polar Express, including Alan Silvestri's musical score. Literally an amazing and fun Christmas movie to watch. Literally, like, literally, literally, the Polar Express is a great movie to watch. And also, this film is also dedicated to actor Michael Jeter, who passed away before the film's release, which he played the, t the two train engineers named Smokey and Steamer. Hey, hey, this may be the first uh, motion capture animated movie that Robert Zemeckis did. And hey, this is saying something. Literally, a great Polar Express is another great Christmas movie to watch. Okay, moving forward. Number four, Home Alone. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now we're getting into the good stuff. 
Home Alone brings back good childhood memories when it comes to to Christmas movies. And what's more fun to have a Christmas film when you can add in a dose of slapstick comedy? Directed by Chris Columbus with John Hughes writing and producing the film, Home Alone follows a boy named Kevin McAllister, played by Macaulay Culkin, who is being overshadowed by his entire family for being, and I quote, completely helpless, a little jerk, a disease, and many, many more insults or lines from his family. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I had to, man. I mean, like, the Home Alone is literally, literally a great movie to watch, even though, yeah, there were so many lines in that movie and quotes that you can't, uh, that you can't let go of. So anyway, Kevin causes trouble by messing with his older brother Buzz for eating his cheese pizza and spilling the milk all over the passports. Which, in, which in a blinket you'll miss a moment, one passport was thrown away. Can you guess which passport that was? That was Kevin McAllister's passport. That was being fro- thrown away. Spoiler alert. So anyway, uh, Kevin is left home alone without being noticed by his family. So basically, basically, this gives him free space that he needs for himself and protecting the house from Harry and Marv, played by Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern. Literally, literally the, Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern put up a funny and great performance as Harry and Marv. <laughs> it's a great movie thanks to the direction by Chris Columbus, writing and performances, most particularly Macaulay Culkin and John Williamson's musical score. Hey, uh, hey, hey, it's a fun slapstick comedy Christmas movie to watch. Hey, yeah, especially with all the traps and great moments in, in this movie. So if you're in it for some fun slapstick, com- slapstick comedy Christmas movie, so sit back, grab cheese pizza, keep the change, and watch Home Alone. You guys give up, or, you, or are you thirsty for the top three entrants? Top three entries it is. Okay, number three, Elf. You knew this one was coming. Elf is considered to be one of the greatest Christmas movies thanks to the thanks to the story, direction of John Favreau, and performances of Will Ferrell and James Caan. This movie follows Buddy the Elf, who grew up in the North Pole after sneaking into Santa's sack in the orphanage. Then he later goes on an adventure to New York to New York City to reunite with his father Walter Hobbs and fall in love with uh, with a woman named uh, Jovi, played by Zoe J- Deschanel. Now, what I actually like about this movie is that Buddy the Elf, played by Will Ferrell, learns about the human world despite being raised by elves, which is basically particularly the the story itself. Like literally, a uh, uh, buddy was a was was a baby, and now being raised by elves because he uh, he snuck into Santa's uh, s- uh, Christmas uh, Christmas bag or sack to to the North Pole, and and being being different is ba- basically being different, and and learning how to fit in. Like like since Buddy was an elf is an elf, but but a human at the same time, he he's learning how to fit in with the human role despite the flaws. And issue issues that he's facing with the world, particularly his father. His father, Walter Walter Hobbs, doesn't understand it, but later comes to realize at the at the end that he is still that Buddy is still his uh, Walter Hobbs' son. Buddy is still the son of Walter Hobbs, and I think this movie does a really good job, despite the fact that it's also a Christmas movie. It's a great Christmas movie and does have a lot of funny funny moments in this movie. More particularly, the scene where uh, Buddy the Elf is going up against the angry elf, <laughs> but or uh, or should I say Miles Finch, played by Peter Dinklage. That fight scene is still great, by the way, and funny at the same time. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally, this movie, this movie is a great Christmas movie to watch, and I recommend it. All right, moving on. Number two, National Lamp- National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. <laughs> it wouldn't be a Christmas list without mentioning the Griswold Family Christmas. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation is not only a great Christmas movie, but by far the greatest sequel for the National Lampoon's franchise in general. John Hughes wrote and produced this movie before Home Alone. This hap hap happiest Christmas comedy follows Clark Griswold, played by Chevy Chase, to have the best Christmas ever while also going into crazy stuff with work, neighbors, family, and decorations, including 25,000 twinkle lights. 
Yes, that's right. The, the, uh, his entire house is covered in Christmas lights. Including some of the funniest and greatest moments ever and that, that, that this movie brought in. Literally, literally, oh man. <laughs> Basically, finding the Christmas tree, uh, his uh, Clark Griswold's rant about his Christmas bonus, which I'm pretty sure you have all, rem I'm pretty sure most of you guys have remembered seeing that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> And, oh man, how many of these greatest moments in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation can I single out, man? <laughs> Literally, it's a, it's a funny Christmas movie to watch, and I recommend that. And I'm pretty sure everybody has watched National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. And I'm pretty sure everyone has. Alright. Okay, uh, now I'm going to the number one spot, and this may come as a surprise. Okay, here we go. Number one. Drum roll, please. A Christmas Story. Taking the best Christmas gift ever is the Christmas childhood movie that you have been waiting for. A Christmas Story. Now, A Christmas Story follows a boy named Ralphie who's basically going through his childhood, childhood as a young boy, going through school, going through school, at, going through school and Christmas while also wanting... A great Christmas present known as the Red Rider BB gun. And yes, I'm pretty sure you all remember this quote. Y'all shoot your eye out, kid. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That quote is literally uh, mentioned multiple times throughout this movie. Even in the story itself. The story itself is actually pretty good. Basically because it, se it settles on Ralphie. Trying to get a uh, Red Rider BB gun for Christmas while still being in school, while being having hanging out with his friends, while being pursued by a bully named Scott Farkas. Literally, literally including the triple dog dare. I wouldn't leave that out, right? 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 <laughs> and the rest is history in the most great and fragile way. Or or whatever you say that, or however you say fragile or fragile way. But hey, fragile. I mean, A Christmas Story is literally, literally, hands down, hands down, the greatest Christmas movie ever. Like, literally, it brings back so many good childhood movies, memories, I mean, especially Home Alone. Home Alone does it too, but A Christmas, a Christmas Story definitely deserves the top honor. Literally, it's a great movie to watch. And A Christmas Story has been played on TV multiple times throughout the holidays. And I recommend watching this this movie, A Christmas Story, is a great movie to watch, thanks in no small parts to his story and memorable quotes. The performances were great too, but it's the story itself that that is literally memorable, especially the quotes. And that is why A Christmas Story is the number one spot on my top 10 favorite Christmas movies of all time. Okay, and there you have it. And, uh... So anyway, what what did you guys think? You think I should have ranked them better? Do you think I missed out on a few Christmas movies? I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are probably gonna say say to me, "Why isn't A Wonderful Life on my list?" Well, to be fair though, and I'm gonna be totally honest with you, I have not seen It's a Wonderful Life. No, 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 no. Hang on, folks. Please, 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 please don't don't bash me about this, okay? Because we all have different opinions, different opinions and favorite Chris and favorite movies, particularly Christmas movies. But you know, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes uh, there is a favorite Christmas movie that that I tend to like to be my number one. But anyway, I know there there's could have been there could have been more to put on my list. But you know, sometimes uh, sometimes my top ten are good, okay? And by the way, yes, there you have it. This was basically episode 12. This is my 12th episode of Kodo's Cinema, by the way. My 12th, 12th ever episode on, on my Kodo's Cinema podcast. Like, it's literally amazing. And uh, literally, literally amazing, by the way. Anyway, uh, um, anyway, anyway uh, I hope everyone's Thanksgiving break, break went well. I know it's kind of a post-Thanksgiving break right now, and especially how everybody's back from their break right now because we got a full week of school this week for us students and next week goes into finals week that is basically surprising i know i know this is basically going to be a stressful week but you know we will get through the school week 
the school week and the rest of the semester very well. So anyway, thank you all for tuning in to Kodo's Cinema. And by, by the way, this will be uh, the last uh, episode for now because uh, because finals week finals week are coming up and uh, and Kodo's uh, Cinema will will return in in the spring of 2020 so yes you'll get to hear me more in 2020 so anyway uh thank you all for tuning in to my uh uh fall finale fall 2019 finale of kodos the cinema thank and uh, and as always thank you for tuning into my episode of my top 10 uh top 10 christmas movies and and by the way good luck to all of you guys with your final with your finals hope the rest of the week is going good I know it's been a stressful. It's gonna be a stressful week, but you know we'll get through this. We'll get through this well. Good luck to everybody. Good luck with your finals. F- please finish the the semester strong. Please finish strong and and have a great Monday afternoon. Have a great week, and uh, I will see you all in 2020. So thank you for tuning in, and I will see you in 2020. And by the way, uh, the, our it will be. Uh, however, Kodo's Cinema will appear uh, at a regular time and day on Monday at 2 p.m. So anyway, or sometimes it may change. Sometimes the days may change. But anyway, uh, thank you all for tuning in. Have a have a great have a have a have a have a great day. Good luck with finals. Have a, and 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 I will see you all in 2020. Bye and Merry Christmas, by the way, and a Happy New Year.